it's more it's more looked at and understood when there's like major blood sugar dysregulation in the conventional space. So yeah. a lot of the conventional docs know that if someone has diabetes, it could affect gut function in major ways, especially like the nerves within the gut being mm -hmm. damaged by blood sugar swings. But I think there's a lot of people that don't have that severe of, of blood sugar dysregulation, but still have blood sugar issues to where it really affects their gut. So I think like there's a lot of understanding in the conventional space, but I feel like in the functional medicine space and integrative space, people might touch on it, but I don't feel like it's really touched on enough. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, pretty frequently. Um, I think that it's tough because we're in such a sugar addicted society. And like right. on the one hand, we have people who are really sugar addicted and carb addicted. And those people could probably use some restriction in that sense. But then there's a lot of people who are like, I have candida or I have SIBO and I can't, I can't eat a carrot because it has carbs, right? Or I can't eat right. whatever. And it's like, ah, like those are the people where it can get really tough to have these conversations because I don't want to send somebody down the rabbit hole of restriction more than I absolutely need to. But yeah, I, I do think that both hyper and hypoglycemia being high blood sugar and low blood sugar is a pretty big deal breaker for the body in general, let alone the gut. And you hit the nail on the head with the nerves and the motility in the gut being a really big focal area. Right. And I, I love that you're bringing up the two sides of the coin because the standard American diet that's really high in carb sugar is definitely going to lead to more blood sugar swings. But I also think concurrently in the SIBO space, if you are cutting a lot of carbs and going to the extremes in that way, it could lead to more blood sugar dysregulation, which I don't think is talked about enough. Mm -hmm. So if you're going low carb and you're having blood sugar dysregulation, sometimes people will even cut more carbs thinking that yeah. it's going to help, but it yeah. could just be adding more stress to the system and more blood sugar dysregulation. So yeah, I think the answer isn't always to cut 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 carbs wise and I think that's what you were getting at when you were yeah. like we we work in this weird SIBO space where so much focus is on starving things out um but I do think that going down that rabbit hole could make blood sugar dysregulation much worse and I do think it could be like a maybe not a SIBO root cause in the sense I don't know if diabetes would be enough to cause SIBO intrinsically, but it could definitely keep you stuck and prevent you right. from fully treating the SIBO, if nothing else. Right. I've never worked directly with someone with type 2 diabetes and SIBO, mm. but I'd, I'd almost venture to say that it could be a root cause in and of itself. Like, again, it's hard to know for sure, but yeah. if it is kind of frying those nerves. I think it could be. And I know like things like gastroparesis are really common mm -hmm. in... So, you know, there's going to be an inherent motility issue if yep. you have wildly uncontrolled or even not wildly, like still uncontrolled glucose levels yep. in type 2 diabetes. But yeah, I mean, I definitely think if you're someone that has diabetes and it's uncontrolled, uh, it's going to be really problematic. Um, yeah. Like the longer I practice, the more I'm astounded that the human body is so resilient and yeah, there could be people with really wild gut problems that are basically asymptomatic.